Hello everyone, I am Ardhan Dude. You are watching ADC English Literature. Herein, I am going to carry out a detailed analysis of society and lifestyles as expressed in Oliver Goldsmith's Sea Stoops to Conquer. I think you all know Oliver Goldsmith's Sea Stoops to Conquer is a beautiful anti sentimental comedy with a lot of fun and amusement. We will try to read the changing time and manners of that period of time. How a drama can be read as the register to social studies of that particular 18th century. But first, the settings of the drama. Oliver Goldsmith's Sea Stoops to Conquer is an anti sentimental comedy. Is, uh, it is at least partly a revival of the traditional comedy of manners and therefore presents a vivid picture of the life and attitude, modes and manners of the contemporary society. But while the restoration comedy of manners had been rooted in the 17th century and presented only the degenerated life of the cosmopolitan cities such as London in the way of the world, Goldsmith's comedy presents the relatively quaint and even, um, even innocent lifestyle of the countryside of the then time 18th century. So while we are reading Sea Stoops to Conquer or watching it performed on stage, we get a glimpse of the times and the glimpse of the manners of the English people of the then time. So the parallel lines goes one, the Londoners and another, the fashions of the rural public or the rural people. Further, while uh, the comedies of manners presented only the aristocratic classes, Goldsmith present the entire spectrum of rustic life and even city bred personalities ultimately find their entry into the play. So the play is very amusing as we can find out a new piece of social panorama is going through on stage. Goldsmith might well have policies for his motto, the dictum mors homina malturam velt, the poetica. The moves and manners of many people are to be seen. So these are the dictum or the motto that uh, Goldsmith here projects. Beginning in the household of a country square, it inches, it inches towards a vivid picture of the then time country life. This is the little piece that you can go through. It's very easy to read. You can, you can get it and you can have a lot of fun here. In fact, all the characters in this play are involved in the world of the then time, either country life or fashionable London. Look at this is troops to conquer characters. There are Tony Lumpkin, Mrs. Hardcastle, Mr. Hardcastle, Charles Morrow, Miss Constance Neville, Sir Charles Marlowe, Miss Kate Hardcastle, George Hastings. So uh, the entire panorama or the characteristic features of the drama is itself a picture gallery of the 18th century. The, all the characters, either they represent a kind of country life or a London fashionable type. Or in their words or in their manners, the entire um, society of the 18th century is being tried to project in a humorous way. The country life is in general monotonous for most people and this often necessitates a journey to center of the culture and fashion. The inhabitants usually live in old-fashioned mumbling mansions lacking the architectural novelty of the city houses. The fact that new buildings were rarely built in the countryside and most county squares had fallen into hard times with the industrialization is evident from the comments of Marlowe who points out that with demise of feudalism the county squares had been compelled to utilize their old mansions 
as ins. So when we find that the all the mistaken identity and all the confusion arises from taking that old mansion as in. So why so? Because that had been the time that it tells. London is a particular source of attraction, especially from the viewpoint of fashion and culture. Mrs. Hardcastle repeatedly expresses her desire to visit London to rub up the rust a little and takes care to keep in touch with the person that had been relevant at the time of London. Even if it is only at second hand, but they are going towards London. So Marlowe Hastings reveal their elegant London fashionableness when they debate about which wristwatch to wear. The winter fashions and many such references you can have in this drama. Again, the life of the women folk in the countryside is vividly presented here. The average intelligent woman like Kate spend her time in keeping such pets as birds in cage or fish in the aquarium. And also in occasionally reading extremely sentimental novels and shedding tears. This uh, the reference of the letter is evident from Miss Noble's question. What she says? Or has the last novel been too moving? Although Kate has to put on a housewife's dress, it is obvious that most of the household work was done by the maids and the cook. They therefore spend their time putting on expensive clothes and falling in love. And that had been the timely fashions. So these were the time when so much things are happening. And the entire panorama of the then time society is being reflected in the drama. That is the real classic work does. Again, the different views on fashions of Mr. and Mrs. Hardcastle. The old couple tells much of the time. Mr. Hardcastle hates whatever old she finds and often shows the madness of the London trips. She wishes to son of old-fashioned trumpery, while her husband is passionate after olds, old friends, old times, old manners, old books, even old wines, military metaphors, and his old wife are intent. His old wife are indeed the fashionable world for Mr. Hardcastle. Mr. Hardcastle is a replica of Dr. Primrose, of the vicar of the Wakefield. He is an old-fashioned patriarch who rules over his family with a nice deal of leniency, who always inculcates family the lesson of the simplicity and the solid virtue of good old times. He is a loving friend and a patient host too. He is indeed, indeed a paint portrait of the English manly gentlemanship. Tony is representative of the country square who did not receive any education since he did not have to earn living. Such sons were invariably idle and luxurious. Tony is absolutely illiterate, being unable to decipher a letter and spend his time in the inn. It is father, like most other contemporary fathers, was his role model and was unparalleled for his blusterous way. Tony too loved to keep the best horses, dogs, girls in the whole country, thereby imitating the very restoration immortality. So vivid and detailed is the representation of contemporary society that even minor observations such as the awful condition of the roads, the peril from a highway are not to be ignored. In this magnificent panorama of the 18th century country life. So Tony is here. So as the description of the countryside, so as Mr. and Mrs. Hardcastle, so as all the words spoken by each and every characters, they somehow display a kind of beautiful panorama 
of worldly affairs that happens in front of us of the 18th century. So with this short lecture, I just invite you to dive deep into this drama and try to locate the references of the 18th century, the references of the then time England, because a comedy must have to reflect a timely references or what the timely rebuke it has made or what kind of fun or what kind of amusement it creates out of the then time fashion is a interesting study and your observation your minute study of this drama will drag you further into the other technicalities of this drama that i will discuss in later course of my lecture so like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to taste tune to this kind of posts and further bye bye thank you